Okay, so I'm Tiffany Kendig, and I'm going to pick up where Annalise left off. Um, one of the, there are several well-known and supported um, benefits of exercise in survivorship. One of the ones that I'm sure we're all interested in hearing about tonight is the positive effects that it has on reducing fatigue. Because the literature does show an association between increased physical activity and decreased levels of fatigue and survivorship, um, we actually recommend that if you are um, experiencing cancer-related fatigue syndrome, that you increase your physical activity within reason and decrease your rest overall. So it's that balance that Annalise had talked about, okay? And we can help you to find that balance tonight while we talk further. The American Cancer Society also has made recommendations in their 2006 um, guidelines for choices for nutrition and physical activity in survivorship that we're going to talk about now. These recommendations are based on research that shows some other benefits of exercise in survivorship. In addition to uh, helping reduce fatigue that you might experience, exercise also helps to improve cardiovascular fitness. This is really important because improving your cardiovascular fitness will not um, only help you to increase your stamina or endurance, it'll also reduce your risk for experiencing um, cardiopulmonary disease or some other comorbid conditions such as diabetes. We all know that exercise also helps to build muscle strength. Muscle strength is very important for reducing risk of falls. It's also really important for um, increasing your capacity to do your work, get through the day, and to build your endurance and stamina as well. An interesting benefit um, that I think is, is very often overlooked is the uh, positive effect of exercise on overall body composition. As we age, we lose muscle mass the composition of your mus muscles will actually change. So there's a lower percentage of muscle fibers and a higher percentage of, of fat and fibrosis in the muscle. Exercise helps to build muscle fibers. So if you're exercising or performing physical activity regularly, you can help to maintain or even improve that percentage of muscle fiber that's functional within your muscles. This is extremely important in survivorship um, the ACS recommendations note that um, exercise has a beneficial effect on weight management. Weight management is important in survivorship because being overweight can negatively impact the risk for recurrence and the likelihood of survival for, for several types of cancers. So the benefits that exercise offers in terms of body composition are not only really important, but they're really empowering to help you take control over positive health outcomes in your future, okay? In addition to these physical benefits, there are also several emotional benefits of exercise that are supported by the research. These include decreased anxiety, decreased rates of depression, increased overall self-esteem, happiness, and several domains of quality of life. So those are the general benefits of exercise, but let's talk about some of the, um, the benefits and what the research shows specifically for survivors. Exercise can have all of the possible benefits that we talked about before, but it also may reduce your risk of secondary cancers, recurrence, cancer-specific mortality, and all-cause mortality. So if you take that into consideration, if you just increase your amount of phys physical activity or exercise, you can really take control and help to um, increase positive health outcomes for yourself. Those are pretty powerful. Okay, the research that supports this is in the, um, uh, I'm sorry, the American Cancer Society's guide that we're referencing throughout the talk tonight. And it cites a study, I'm going to quote the study here. It says, the data from almost 3,000 breast cancer survivors in the nurse's health study showed that higher levels of post-treatment physical activity were associated with a 26 to 40 percent reduction in the risk of breast cancer recurrence, breast cancer specific mortality, and all-cause mortality. The risk reduction was seen with as little as one to three hours per week of moderate intensity activity, with further reductions for those performing three to five hours per week. Similar associations have been reported for physical activity and clinical outcomes in colorectal cancer survivors. Although preliminary, these data suggest that physical activity may be really important for reducing the risk of recurrence and extending, survivor, um, extending survivorship. Okay, so now that we know some of the really big benefits of exercise, let's talk about some recommendations, the recommendations that the American Cancer Society makes for physical activity and survivorship. Just a disclaimer here, for your safety, 
Always talk with your doctor before you start any new exercise routine. This is particularly important if you're on medications or treatments that are going to affect your cardiac or pulmonary status. Talk to your doctor anytime you start a new program. Also stay in touch with your doctor. Let them know how you're doing in terms of your physical activity and your health, okay? You also never want to exercise if you have a health condition that is unstable or if you're experiencing new signs or symptoms. You always want to talk to your doctor first before you exercise, okay? You also never want to exercise if your doctor advises against it, all right? So now let's talk about the elements of an exercise prescription so that when we talk about what the ACS recommends in survivorship, we all have a really good understanding of what we're talking about. There are four elements of an exercise prescription. The first is mode. And what we mean by mode is the type of exercise that you're performing, okay? So different examples of modes of exercise include aerobic or endurance activities such as brisk walking or jogging. We can talk about a different mode being strength or resistance training, so working out with free weights or resistance bands. Um, also flexibility or stretching exercises, okay? Each of these contribute to the beneficial effect of, of exercise and should be considered when we're talking about exercise programs. Okay, the second component is frequency. And by frequency, we're referring to how many times a week one exercises or the number of repetitions that we're talking about for a certain exercise, okay? The third, the third element is intensity. And by intensity, we're talking about a measure of how hard your body's working when you're performing that exercise. Okay, we're going to talk in a little bit about different ways that you can monitor your intensity to make sure you're working in an intensity that gets your heart working enough to give you a benefit, but not too hard that exercise is going to be harmful. Okay, and we're also going to talk about duration. By duration, we're talking about how long the activity is carried out. Okay, now that we have an understanding of these common terms, let's take a look at the American Cancer Society's recommendations for exercise in survivorship, okay? So it's important to highlight here that there really are no evidence-based direct recommendations for survivors. So what the ACS did is they looked through all the research that's available for all different types of cancers and then looked at exercise physiology concepts and based on all of that together, they made the following recommendations. So in survivorship, they recommend an exercise program that is multimodal. All right, it's really important to include strengthening exercises because strengthening, like we said, resistance um, is going to help build your, your muscle mass, which has those important benefits on body composition. Aerobic exercise is also important to help increase your endurance and stamina. That, those are things like brisk walking that get your heart rate up a little bit. Flexibility exercises are also really important. There we're talking about stretching in your warm up, cool down, or as part of your exercise. Bear in mind, that flexibility is really the key to allowing full range of motion while you're exercising. It's also really important for maintaining and assuming good posture, which is critical when you're exercising. Okay, So a multimodal exercise program is recommended by the ACS. They recommend that you perform your activity at a frequency of five or more days per week. Okay. The intensity, the ACS recommends moderate to vigorous intensity of exercise, okay? They define moderate intensity as an intensity requiring energy close to that of a brisk walk. They define vigorous exercise um, as exercise that causes a noticeable increase in heart rate, breathing rate, depth, and sweating. I just want to take a minute and comment here in general. We recommend kind of erring towards the moderate intensity level, okay? Vigorous intensity exercise can be associated, excuse me, can be associated with increased risk for things like upper respiratory tract infections, especially when you're healing. And moderate intensity um, exercise has been shown to give great benefits, so it's kind of the safer option here, okay? The duration that's recommended by the um, American Cancer Society is performing exercise for at least 30 minutes per session 45 to 60 minutes is preferable. So overall, again, we want a multimodal exercise program. You're doing sessions of about 30 minutes, preferably 45 to 60 minutes, at least five days a week, okay, of moderate intensity. 
The intensity that we talked about, it's really important to give you tools so you can tell how hard your body's working. Am I working hard enough to get the benefits of exercise? And am I working too hard for my body to handle right now? Okay, so these are a couple ways that, that you can monitor your intensity. The first way is, is called the talk test. It's actually pretty easy to administer. Um, the details of the talk test are on the CDC website, but I'm gonna go through them with you briefly here. Basically, if you're, if you're working at a light intensity, you should be able to sing while you're performing the activity or the exercise comfortably. If you're working at a moderate intensity, you should be able to carry on a conversation comfortably. So if I'm jogging and I'm able to talk to my friend comfortably, I'm probably working at a moderate intensity, okay? They don't mean you should be able to talk about, you know, your whole past week, but they define, you know, a conversation. You should be able to say about five words in a row without feeling like you're gasping, okay? Vigorous activity or exercise, on the other hand, is if you're too winded to continue with the conversation. So if you're jogging or performing your circuit training or what have you, and you start to notice that you're breathing really, really heavily and you can't comfortably talk, you're probably working at a little too high of an intensity. That's just a quick and dirty way that you can monitor intensity, okay? The other way Annalise hit on before, this is called the Borg Rate of Perceived Exertion Scale. The reason that this scale is helpful is because there are correlations between the number that you rate your perceived exertion at and your heart rate at that time. And your heart rate is really a good indicator of the intensity that you're working at, okay? So how does the Borg scale work? Basically, it's a scale from 6 to 20 that you can all see. It's in your handout and it's also up here. You look at the descriptions for each one. So a 6 would be defined as no exertion at all. A 20 would be maximal exertion, like, oh, I just totally exerted myself. Okay. Generally, if you're working at a moderate intensity, it's advised that you fall somewhere between the 12 to 14 range. Somewhat hard. How hard am I working? Somewhat hard. So as you're doing your physical activity or as you're doing your exercises, you stop and you ask yourself honestly, how hard is my body working right now? You're taking into consideration fatigue, how winded you're feeling, things of that nature, but they really want you to kind of ask globally. They don't want you to say, well, my legs are tired, so I must be at a 20. Think about it in terms of how your whole body is feeling. Then pick a number that goes along with how you're feeling. So right now, I would say I'm probably having no exertion at all. I would give myself a six. The literature shows that if I'm rating myself at a six, my heart rate's probably around 60 beats per minute now. Okay, so it's that correlation with your heart rate that makes this worthwhile. Okay. When you're doing, when you're, when you're thinking about intensity, also think about the fact that after treatment, you may have decreased endurance, you may have decreased stamina, so the intensity that you were used to working at before may be a little lower than, the, than what it is now, okay? So it's always important to kind of ease into things and especially really stop and ask yourself, how hard am I working right now and be realistic about it, especially as you start your exercise programs, okay? Now, now we understand the components of, of the exercise prescription and the recommendations from the ACS we want to talk about getting started. Where do I start? If you're sitting here and you're thinking, okay, right now I really engage in no regular physical activity at all. A good starting point for you is to gradually build up to 30 or more minutes of moderate intensity activities. Okay? So first you're going to try and build up that frequency up to 30 minutes. And we're going to go through an exercise program today, but we're also going to touch on the fact that your activity throughout the normal day walking from the subway station to get here, that counts. All of those things count in physical activity, okay? So you can, we'll go through some tips for you to add increased activities into your day, but again, you're gonna start by trying to get up to 30 minutes, okay? If you're exercising or you're physically active but you're not as active as the ACS guidelines um, suggest, then where you wanna go, you wanna strive for more consistency. So you're saying, okay, I'm doing 30 minutes twice a week. Now we want to try to be a little more consistent. We want to try to get up to that five or more days per week. Okay. If you're at the recommended levels, there's always room for improvement. So you can increase the time or the intensity of the activities that you're performing. Okay. So if you're performing 30 minutes per week, try and bump yourself up into that 45 to 60 minute range. Remember it's preferred. Okay. Also remember that there is a relationship and once you build yourself up beyond that 30 minutes, those positive effects that were reported in the nurse's health study, those effects were stronger in women who were doing 45 to 60 minutes of exercise, okay? Okay, just remember with any exercise program, 
You also always want to include a brief warm up or cool down. Um, you know, build up your, your heart rate a little bit by doing some low intensity walking and some stretching. Okay? So, now, you've started your exercise program, you're at 30 minutes a week, you're doing five days a week, and you're working on, let's say, strengthening exercises and aerobic exercises. How do you progress your exercise? What's safe? If you're in good health, exercising regularly, consistently using good form, which is really important, and a given exercise is starting to feel too easy, you used to be able to do two sets of 10, and now that's, you know, it used to be a little bit of a challenge, now it's a piece of cake. You want to start by increasing your frequency first, then followed um, by an increase in duration or intensity. Okay? So just kind of bear in mind that if you're increasing your intensity, you should decrease your frequency or duration initially. All right? So if you're asking your body to work a little bit harder, decrease your frequency or your duration just to make sure you're safe. Okay? Some contraindications or precautions to exercise. We're not going to go through each of these right now, but I do highly recommend that you take a look at this list. If you're experiencing any of these conditions, it is highly advised that you stop exercise and contact your doctor, okay? General things to think of. If you're exercising, you start to experience chest, chest pain, extreme shortness of breath, feel like your heart's beating fast or funny. If you're having increased levels of serious pain, if you're feeling, um, you know, unusual bruising, bleeding, nausea, things of that nature, you might want to stop and talk to your doctor, okay? Basically, any new signs or symptoms that it's outside the realm of that, ooh, I just worked out at the gym type feeling, it's a good thing to talk about with your doctor, okay? So now that we've gone through the importance of exercise, how to get started, how to continue with it, how do you really stick with it? We want to strive to maintain activity as much as possible. So it's not, like, like Tiffany said, it's not necessarily doing 30 to 60 minutes of just physical exercise at one time every day, but trying to integrate physical activity throughout your entire day. The benefits accumulate over the course of a lifetime and understand that increasing your level of activity is really beneficial at any age. So how do we stick with it? Set some goals. You may want to write down goals, keep a log, but you want the goals to be realistic, achievable, measurable. You may want to do it in terms of time or the type of exercise you're doing. You want to monitor how you're feeling during and after the exercise and keep a log of that because it's actually a good thing to keep track of so this way you can progress your exercise program. You also want to consider exercising with friends. It's been shown that that people that exercise with friends or in groups are actually uh, better at sticking with the exercise program. And again, you want to try to build time into your schedule for exercise and trying to incorporate fitness into your daily routine. And here are some tips on how to do that. So for instance, instead of taking the elevator, maybe consider taking the stairs. Or take the elevator a couple of flights and then take the stairs the rest of the way. Walk or bike to your destination. You may want to consider if you are living in the suburbs and driving places, parking the car a little bit further away so you have to walk a little further. Getting off the bus several blocks away from your destination. Trying to walk to visit nearby friends or coworkers instead of sending an email. Walking to lunch, playing with children or pets. Exercise while watching television. You can walk on a treadmill. You can do seated exercises, you can use hand weights, you can use a stationary bike. Um, try to take 10 minute breaks to walk or stretch throughout the day. And you may want to consider wearing a pedometer. That's a nice thing to actually see the number of steps you're taking a day and this way you can kind of gauge how much physical activity you're doing and you can use that as a basis to increase that number each day. So here are our references for tonight's talk.